having learned a lot. It is really good uh, to be here like, with, uh, with uh, partners working on the same issues and addressing the same challenges and uh, difficulties to share biodiversity data. Uh, so, uh, starting from CREA is, is a very small institution. Uh, as I said, uh, 10 uh, permanent staff members, like uh, three directors, one dealing with, uh, with uh, collaboration issues, the other one uh, dealing with, uh, with project proposals, of, uh, the follow-up of the project, so the other director is, is the director of information systems. And uh, then we have like uh, some part of the staff uh, dealing with uh, the, the daily activities, giving support like to the to the to the networks integrated by the information systems. So it's another three technical staff, two administrative people, and uh, one person like to take care of uh, of uh, the building uh, half time. Uh, in addition, we have like uh, uh, postdoc fellowships that are working on specific tasks and uh, specific projects. So it's a, it's a very small institution, uh, but looking back, like all the work done that was, was carried out uh, in more than 20 years, so we started uh, to work with uh, biodiversity information systems even before the CRIAS establishment. As an independent organization. And so I think, like uh, looking back and looking at all the collaboration that we are managed, uh, that we managed to carry out like uh, throughout the uh, war uh, uh, in the last, uh, the last 20 years, I think is, uh, I think is, is a very good experience. I think it's really difficult because I think each country has its own challenges and difficulties. But I think it's, it's, it's a good experience to be, to, to be considered. But uh, in order to understand uh, where we got and what are the, the CREAS products that we will be shown this afternoon, uh, I'd like to just to give an overview of uh, an, uh, a historical background of the CREAS effort focused on data sharing and, uh, uh, and boarding. Uh, uh, so basically we have like a history of more than two decades of life uh, living with the informatics ethics, red dragons and crocodiles. Basically now I think now we are like a kind of dinosaurs of the biodiversity informatics. And so we started our work in 1982 uh, building up like a microbial culture collection. I'm a microbiologist. And so uh, in building the collection, we felt the need like to build databases. And uh, then we started like looking what was in the other culture collections available in the country. And so in 1984, we had like the first uh, catalog of uh, mi microbial strains in Brazilian collections. Uh, that this was available online in 1984. Uh, so uh, based on like this uh, first effort, like the Brazilian government asked us to, to expand and to include more collections and uh, to build up a database. And so like in 1986, we had like a catalog that was integrated with the online online integration with uh, the, the catalog of European collections that, that at the time were very well developed uh, with a very you know, innovative approach like to, to disseminate data on microbial strains. And then uh, in 1989 uh, we felt like the need like to integrate like, data from microorganisms with other types of data like the data from the hosts and so there's uh, the, the beginning of the history of uh, Korea. And uh, then in 1991, there was a general assembly of the International Union of Biological Sciences in Amsterdam. Uh, the, the focus of that assembly was uh, somehow the preparation for the, for the real meeting in 92. And so uh, 
in the IUPS, uh, uh, we, we made a proposal to hold a, a, a meeting uh, to, uh, to discuss uh, the needs and specifications for our biodiverse information network. Uh, so uh, at the time we invite like to like uh, people involved uh, in in addressing the issue of uh, biodiversity networks and uh, by the time uh, Cristalca was uh, officer of National Science Foundation, uh, Cristalca was there, Rodrigo Gomes from INBI was there, Conabio people were invited as well, uh, people from Australia. And so it was very, you know, like early effort to discuss uh, biodiversity information networks. And so the, the result was so interesting that uh, we organized another workshop in, in 1994. By the time we had already the results of the Hill Conference in 92. And, uh, and then uh, this uh, 94 uh, workshop was to uh, to lay uh, the, the, you know, like the, the role like to, to be discussed at uh, the, the first conference of the parties in Bahamas. And uh, then after the, the, the Bahamas meeting, uh, there was uh, uh, the, the SUBSTA meeting, the first SUBSTA meeting in Paris. And by the time uh, Kalesu Juma uh, from Kenya, he was the secretary of uh, of, uh, of uh, the CBD, and uh, I went to the meeting, to the, to the Paris meeting, and uh, he, he called like the Brazilian delegation, asking for a proposal to establish the, 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 the CBD CHM. And so he, uh, and he, he needed that in a hurry, and so I didn't stay the whole meeting, I went back to Brazil, and we started to work like in making a proposal how the CBD could set up like a, the, the clean house mechanism. Uh, and then he, 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 the, he did the same request for the WCMC in Cambridge by that time. That had like another approach, a completely different approach, a centralized approach to set up like the, 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 the clean house mechanism as a brokering system like to provide services to the countries. And so it was completely different from our proposal to build up like in a distributed fashion, building capacity in the countries such that they could be linked through the internet. By the time it was very, you know, like a, a very innovative approach. And then when we saw like the, 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 the final document that was going to be discussed like in, in Jakarta meeting, that was held in November of 95, we said, well, that's not possible. That's that, you know, like we're combining two different approaches. You're just proposing a monster. And so we, we uh, called another meeting to discuss uh, like how the, 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 the clearinghouse mechanism should be built. And then we present like this concept note at, at the Jakarta meeting and was adopted at, at the second this, this proposal was adopted at uh, the Jakarta meeting. But like when you, we look today, what's the clearinghouse mechanism? You see that was adopted in paper, but not implemented. So when you get like to the, the clearinghouse mechanism pages, you, you cannot get much biodiverse information or legal advice or anything. And so that's the complexity of, uh, you know, like, uh, making recommendations and not being able like to implement the recommendations made. But anyhow, this, this was a lesson learned. So uh, with all that, that uh, you know, like a uh, basis, we start like help like to set up like the programs uh, like uh, in the country and also to, to help uh, the discussion. Put that in your pocket, it's the microphone the discussion of uh, regional initiatives. So, uh, like in this period, like from 1996 to 1999, uh, we, we, we put a lot of effort, like in helping to shape up Yabin, and also 
de FAPESP, Biota Program, onde de, de Virtual Biodiversity Institute of São Paulo State. And in parallel, we followed up all the discussions of the OECD Mega Science Forum, and also we had like a very, you know, uh, very, very, uh, very important participation in the sense that we learned a lot in the G GBIF planning phase. And uh, then, uh, then in 1999, uh, we, we had like the launch of uh, the IABIN, the, the Inter-American Biodiversity Network in Brazil. And I was very fortunate that uh, to, to meet Tom Peterson. In this meeting, that's where we started our collaboration with uh, Kansas University. So this was extremely important for Korea's development, so every two years or every three years, town is back in, the Bra in Brazil just helping us, just giving us advice, just uh, help. He has been helping us uh, a lot to look into the future. And uh, then, uh, so he was there like in April, and then uh, he, he was there again in November. And uh, also, uh, I think, uh, Town is, uh, I consider him as the father of uh, the Species Link Network concept. He came uh, there like uh, just for a short meeting uh, to discuss how we could build like a, a, a Brazilian network that could be integrated uh, to the Species Analyst Network. That was a very interesting experience by the time. And so uh, we got uh, the funds to develop like the Species Link Network, and this was like a four-year well-funded project by FAPESP. And so uh, this project was extremely important uh, because uh, with, with the funds of uh, this project, we were able to start like an intense collaboration with GBIF. So like uh, adopting like all the standards and protocols, like uh, working on the digger development and then later on on the taper development. And so CREA has always been very careful and very aware of adopting internationally agreed standards and protocols. And uh, also, in the time, we started a very good collaboration with uh, the Brazilian Ministry of Science and Technology to set up like uh, the, the, the Microbial Resource Center's capacity building program. And uh, since then, we have been developing software to be, uh, to be installed in microbial culture collections. So that's another level of complexity because uh, you know that like for microorganisms, you need like to, to have uh, traceability of all the processes and all the products in the collection. And so that's another level of complexity. And so that's why I, I, my question like to Chris, when he talked about uh, microbial diversity, and so I asked, which are the institutions that will be the basis like for this kind of uh, effort of GBIF? So this is really key, because uh, you know, like uh, in some parts of the world, and including uh, USA, I think uh, some of the institutions, like they have like the, the concept of, uh, of a shop, that sells cultures and uh, do not participate in international efforts, do not share data. And so I think uh, uh, you cannot uh, start building a program without having, you know, like a good map of uh, the institutions. Um, uh, so uh, in uh, 2002, the, the Ministry of Science and Technology uh, uh, of Brazil uh, published uh, like uh, the, 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 the document that's the basis for the implementation of the Brazilian network of biological resource centers. Okay, that's the living collections, microorganisms, uh, uh, cell tissues of plants and animals and, uh, and also reagents uh, associated uh, with, uh, with uh, this material. 
Uh, and then, uh, based on you know, like uh, the the good experience of of uh, this uh, this document, uh, we worked in another document later on for biological collections and biodiverse information systems. But first, uh, before I talk about like the the, the document, like uh, on, on biological collections, I would uh, I'd like to mention like the early phase of uh, the species link network that was launched in uh, October 2002 in a TED Week meeting that wa was organized by by CRIA in in Dayatuba. Uh, I think that was. You know, like uh, internationally, I think uh, was the first uh, uh, network officially launched that adopt like the Digger protocol, and was quite interesting because uh, we were adopting, you know, like uh, uh, internationally agreed standards and uh, communication protocols to launch the network and the number of collections and uh, the the data. Then the, the number of records was very small, but you know, like conceptually, was really important because uh, uh, was really important also later on to understand why the big collections uh, by the time were not prepared uh, to share data, and also to understand why some big collections still today are not prepared to share data. And so we have like to understand like the problems and the complexity of the big collections. And uh, that's uh, when town talks about like the dragons. And then sometimes I, I talk about like the crocodiles, the difference of the dragons and the crocodiles. Okay, the dragons are very imponent, but uh, like the crocodiles, if uh, you are doing a thing that uh, you, they cannot do, they try to eat you. And so they try to destroy you. <laughs> and so that's, that's the, the difference of concept. And so we are always facing, you know, like those big institutions trying to eliminate CREA in Brazil. But uh, that's, that's part of the game. We have like to understand and we have like to work with them to see how this problem can be sorted out and overcome with uh, the generation of uh, new directors and uh, new curators, see, because we're in constant evolution. And uh, so then, uh, like uh, the Species Link Network was, I think, a landmark in you know, Brazilian biodiversity information systems. And uh, then uh, in 2005, we organized uh, we had like a project that was contracted by the Ministry of Science and Technology to, to uh, prepare some documents and uh, to make a meeting to discuss a national program for biological collections and information systems. So this was a big effort of CRIA and uh, at uh, the same time a big mistake to accept this, uh, to do this work because uh, um, it was a tremendous effort. We, you know, we involved like the Brazilian Society of uh, Botany, the Brazilian Society of Microbiology, and the Brazilian Society of Zoology. So we involved all of them. And uh, we invited experts to write specific documents on specific issues addressing capacity building in biological collections, information systems, integration of information systems. So we had like 65 experts working on 29 documents. And then we had like a workshop where we invited uh, representat representatives like from Brazil, like from on a regional basis and also on an institutional basis. And so then we came with this document that uh, we call the Orange Book. And then after the, the document was published, there was a tremendous criticism of the big collections. How dare an institution of 10 people can advise us on what we should do? And so this was, and so they just want to destroy Korea and, uh, you know, like, uh, 
and was a big problem with uh, the Brazilian Society for the Advance, uh, Advancement of Science, where they were like advisors to the, to the president of the society. And so 